everything. Okay, let's here we go. Let's rock and roll or not. <clears throat> uh, you listen to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. We are listener supported, the largest non commercial uh, listener supported station on the planet. Um, this is Changing Reality, edition 146, where I traffic in the most important things. Let's see. Um, and I'm sick. Um, and Terrell 03 was supposed to call me, and he hasn't called in yet. We're going to talk about the heavy mass object, the black dwarf, uh, for the first hour. Um, but uh, let me just keep on going. So this is because I'm a kind of in a grog. I got a stomach flu, fever, shakes. I don't know what happened. Um, so it's February uh, the 8th, one minute into the 8th of the new day uh, on the East Coast, still the 7th on the West. Uh, the year of our Lord, 2013. Uh, Terrell just showed. Okay. Um, very good. That's great. That's great, Terrell. Because um, I'm in no shape. I'll kind of, I'll kind of just ride shotgun, Terrell. You, um, I'll have maybe a couple questions, but you know, <clears throat> you go ahead. Why don't you just kind of take things over, and I'll jump okay. in when I can. Hey, I remember those days. I was really, my throat's not really well. I've talked too much today. But <clears throat> I remember those days with the radio panel, and I had to be carried a lot of the times. So I've, I've been there. I, I know how that feels. Yeah, I listened to Earth Play's show, too, earlier, and I wish I was there to give some commentary. He had a pretty interesting guest on there, Mark, somebody. And um, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see the, the guys that I've worked with before getting their shows and getting a, a good bunch of guests together and Revolution Radio, take it to the next level. Well, do you so, want me to open the phones up early? I mean, what do you want to do? You want to do your, your yeah, update? Yeah, let me give an update first. Okay. There's a few topics that I want to cover, okay. and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll jump into questions. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I was going to mention a little bit what I heard on that other show. Some of the listeners, they might have been li tuning in and listening to Earthplay. Then uh, they were talking about... Uh, the volcanism that's going on, the volcanoes, where this magma is coming from, deep inside the earth. Something strange is happening here. And um, we had a lull period from September 26th, 2012 to December 28th. That was the one that was predicted. I predicted it, and I think I know the reason why, obviously. That's according to the Black Star hypothesis. And, um, so, and the tectonic plates are actually trying to come apart in some areas of the earth right now. We've got methane gas coming out from under the North Pole. Um, we have uh, Moscow is buried under record 100 years. They haven't had a storm like this. And we're seeing freaky weather happening. Uh, in oh. Russia, actually, it's more than that, Terrell. Um, they go back to something like 1029. <clears throat> and the only thing they can say is that in the year 1029, there was nobody alive who could remember a storm that was that cold and this is the same type of storm. Nobody can remember it, a storm and it being as cold as it is, but go ahead. Right, but it gets that cold in the Arctic, in the North Pole, but what's happening is the magnetic pole migration is bringing the North Pole further south and in their direction, so it's, what their weather's changing. Now, on our side of the planet, it's becoming more um, tropical where, in, where I'm at. Right, currently, I'm down in Florida, but it's, I mean, it's warm here. We're running the air conditioner here, and... The, what's happening is the fluctuations in the jet stream are fluctuating you know, towards the other side. You know, it does wobble. It's not exa an exact science here, but generally the jet stream is moving north up into Canada and it's moving south on the other side of the planet. And that air north of the jet stream is Arctic air. And so we're, in Moscow, it's becoming more like the North Pole. And that's exactly what we're seeing according to the magnetic pole pole migration models and i don't believe that has to do with a pole a, a a pole flip a magnetic pole flip that happens three to seven times every million years <clears throat> i think those models are going to fail but i think what's causing it is there's another magnet in our proximity and it's the same thing that turned the magnetosphere around march 12th and 13th 2012 um what i'm going to do is just give a few symptoms here and the black star hypothesis this is this appears to be the master key for me it explains everything from the politics to to the economy to everything um so i want to make mention of that that uh the fella i think his name was mark that he said that, that there's changes going on in the other planets which there are but it, then, then he said that the thing that they all have in common is the sun well 
there's a problem with that because the sun is actually supposed to be headed towards a maximum and it's going into a lull. And so blaming the sun for what's happening is really not it's, – it's that, that model is also not going to work. Um, the, why is the sun behaving strangely? Well, when it should be going into a high, I mean we can go back to 1900 and see the solar the, – the, the seismicity charts – for the six to eight magnitude events, you see that they peak with the solar maximums that go down. It's a regular cycle. You can see it's just regular as it can be until 2008. After 2008, the six to eight magnitude events started going parabolic, and we're still, you know, that 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 is still happening. So at just about at this point, I want to speak just a, just a little bit. I have a little bit of a smile on my face. You know, a little bit of controversy makes good radio. And there's a little bit of controversy brewing between myself and suspicious observers. Of all people, who I think is a great news guy, you know, he does a three-minute news in my research room. I, I watch his. Is there something you want to say there, Hijacker? Yeah, no, that suspicious observer. He does three-minute news. He compresses it. Very good. He's on YouTube under suspicious observer. So I was going to say, yeah, uh, yeah, he does have a different theory than you got. But go ahead. Yeah, but but the guy gives great news. I mean, come on, I I watch his video every day. And I make a short link for it, and I put it up at the top of my research room, right behind Terlo3.com, up in my research group over at Paltalk. He's, he's got a little spot there from now on. The guy does great news work. So he made a comment in one of his videos about people of tenure. Those are people that go in and make comments on his videos. So I'm like, well, I haven't made a comment on any of his videos, so I need to go make a few comments. So I did. And that, you know, he's a little bit upset with me. And uh, – there's some debate about my views versus his views, but the important thing to realize is that this thing's bigger than us. We need to try to figure out what's going on. And uh, on my radio panel, you, you know, Earthplay didn't agree with my theories or your theories. He had his own theories, but that's what gives you a larger footprint in the research. My, my research group had hundreds of members, and that's what I want, a d diverse group of people that think different things. You don't have to think what I think, I, I, but I, I want to hear what you have to say, and I want to hear all of your evidence. I'm going to disagree. I'm working with a black star hypothesis, and I don't need you to do a black star hypothesis. That's what I'm doing. You, if you've got a galactic plane theory or you have a gamma ray burst hypothesis or whatever it is, then I, and I want to hear it, and I respect it. And We'll find out who's right at the end, but let's not attack one another. So I only have good things to say. So uh, about suspicious observers, Earthplay, you, Deacon John, everybody that I've ever worked with, then Marshall Masters, everybody that I've been on the radio with, then I have the highest regard. Um, yeah, no, Terrell, I agree. No, scientist, a true scientist wants the truth. And so a true scientist wants a hundred other scientists in the room. And then they all sit around and says, guess what, gang? One of us is going to be right, and we're going to figure it out. doesn't matter who's wrong. But between all 100 of us, we're going to figure it out. So I don't understand why they attack you so viciously when, I mean, <clears throat> but anyways, I'm not, I don't want to go into that. I'm, uh, but you get attacked and see, they, we don't attack them because they may be right. Um, and so, yeah, but they won't even talk sometime. Or did, you, did your comment, when you posted your comment, were you able to? Yeah, they haven't banned me yet. Oh, okay. No, no, but, I don't think he wouldn't do that. But, but I'm called a liar. I'm called that you know, like I'm being mischievous or that I have ill intent or something like that, and that's really uncalled for. Um, it, it, then he sent me a message that I have to remove his stuff from my YouTube channel within 24 hours. You know, I'm being, so now I'm being threatened, but I haven't mirrored any video. And uh, uh, under you know, what, what is it, Section 17 or of the U.S. Code, then f fair use. I mean, I'm allowed to mention the guy, and I can give a link to his video. I'm actually helping him by sending people over to his website. So it, it really doesn't make sense. The problem that I had with his it, with his uh, commentary is that um, he said, you know, the Corona hole is turning around, and an hour after this became front face facing, then uh, we had an event. Well, an hour is not enough time for anything out of the sun. It takes two or three days. If you want to, to make that kind of a uh, theory stick, then you're going to do certain things. You're going to show equatorial, uh, front-facing event. Number one, it's got to be equatorial. If, if, if you've got a coronal hole up on the, you know, it's it's 45 degrees above or below, uh, that it's going to go above. It's going to go above or below the Earth. We're 93 million miles away. Now, come on. 
Okay, so <laughs> so if, if he wants to do that, then he's going to show the magnetosphere fluctuate. He's going to show the, the bow shock compress. And then he's going to have his event. He's going, and you can show it very easily if you're going to try to use the solar model, which my opinion is is very one-dimensional. The um, it, an pinhead astrophysicist is going to make that connection really fast, and, and that's going to be, you know, understood by his his uh, colleagues very quickly. But there is no pattern to what's go, to what's going on there. But you know, there's there, and, you know, like the 188 day cycle, for example. And my question to him is. He says he has four uh, probability models going. That's good. Well, that's how I interpreted what he said. He has four different um, – I can't remember the exact words he used. There are f four different reasons why these earthquakes are happening. Okay, well, you know, well that's good. Um, so I, I lost my thought. Well, you know that what? It could be, Terrell, and I've noticed this even in the truth movement, 9-11 movement, uh, the stuff that we talk about. Um, you know, I don't know what hit – what his religious beliefs are, whether he's a Christian or not. Um, but sometimes some of these people who are atheist, uh, just because you come from a Christian worldview, um, uh, they, they have, they have hatred. <clears throat> it's uh, it's uncanny what I've noticed. So I don't know whether he's an atheist or what, but sometimes the, these atheists out there, they got colored glasses and, you know, they just go blind at scientific data or any, anything else. But um, anyways, if, if he wants to call in, because this, this is a big audience, <clears throat> and I'm sure somebody knows him, um, and this is the digital age, you can get a hold of anybody in no time. So if somebody wants to call him and he wants to come on and talk about it, uh, sure, sure, give him all the time he wants. Um, yeah. No, 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 no problem, but go ahead, I, Carol. I, I have asked him to please come and do that on my show and on this show, you know, and everywhere. Let's get him on the radio, okay? So the question was... Um, if you have four probability models going, because that's that's the way I work, okay. Then w when do they say the next big event's going to be? You know, that's the question that I have for Keith Hunter and the Earth plays, and you know the people that are smart, and, and you know they got good head on their shoulders, and they're looking at a lot of data, and they have models going like I do. Uh, and if there's a pattern, then okay, share it with us. Well, you know, I Terrell, you know you've been banged up a little bit. Uh, since that eight point uh, earthquake in the Solomon Islands and all those sixes. Um, and so people were basically saying, you know, what day is it? It's not the 188 day model. And yet we had a, a, an eight magnitude quake in the Solomon Islands. Um, so what do, what do you say to something like that, that criticism? No, th well, no, that's not, a, they shouldn't be criticizing because that means they're not paying attention because the regular pat pattern of seismicity, whenever I started this investigation, was threes, fours, and fives, and you had a six every now and then. And then that jumped up to a seven every now and then, and that reached 7.7 7 on the last uh, cycle. Okay, Just before we went into the low period, we, we were up there in the 7.7. 7. Remember the Aleutian event? The, on the alignment event, was 7.9. It was downgraded. But just before that, we had another 7.7. 7. Then I said, we're going to have a low period here. But on the next cycle, when we come around, that odd quake is going to be in the 8 magnitude range. So I was actually right on what happened. Yeah, I was getting ready to say, no, you actually predicted that. The bird deaths, the fish crash uh, getting disoriented and, and, and going up on the beaches. And uh, you said the, the, it would increase the magnitude uh, of the quakes as it came through. Well, does this mean, Terrell, that on 188 day, which is April 1st or 2nd, that we can expect like a 9 or a 9.5, something tremendous? Yeah. Um, well, that's my question is where that, that I have for the Keith Hunters and for the, uh, you know, the people that are giving commentary on these topics on the radio and to suspicious observers is, you know, if you have models running, what does it say? When is the next event? Because mine says April the 2nd. You know, I'm not, I'm not April the 3rd, April the 1st. April the 2nd is the next day on the 188-day cycle. And I know the reason why. It's because we're going to pass into a gravity trough that's connecting two stars together, right? And, for example, this is, the, this is, a, this is a good point right here. The date of Fukushima, the, the date that it happened was March 11, 2011. When you add one year and one day to that date, then you get March the 12th, 2012, the day the magnetos turned around. So we're in just about the same exact section of space. When the magnetosphere turned around and the bow shock pointed out there towards Leo and the tail pointed at the sun. Okay, now what could cause 
the Fukushima event and the Guerrero event and the Chile event the year before, all the way back to Sumatra in a pattern, and also turn the magnetosphere around. And the answer is going to be some type of star. Okay. Now, you, you know, you, you, that's what the modeling says for me. And I think I can predict when the next event's going to happen, April the 2nd. Okay. So I'm bringing up some of these points over there on his, on his uh, YouTube channel to, to try to get a little tenure, which he says that's what, you know, that you need to do. And instead of going, oh, you know what? You know, that might, there's a pattern there. It might be. Then I'm getting, well, you better remove my stuff from your, in, uh, your, from your YouTube channel. And m my comments are called spam. So, I would invite him and any anybody, uh, suspicious observers, anybody that wants to come on the radio to come right here onto your show. So it's not onto my show, you know, like I'm going to be having an advantage on Friday nights. By the way, it's Friday nights over to awakenradio.net at Friday night at 10 a.m. Um, Eastern time. And it's been shortened to an hour because lack of, lack of interest, right, lack, lack of sponsorship. So it's, I'm going to shorten it to an hour, and if there's still enough interest, then, well – I think I'll be showing up over here with you, hijacker, and sharing. Oh, you know, over here at Freedom Slips, which I'm, which I'm going to do anyway. But um, the, the listeners will just have to come here in, in order to hear it. So that's that's kind of what I want to share. That's where we are on the 180 day cycle. The, um, the some of the phenomena we're looking at now. Um, the United Knowledge. He's one that I would like to get here on the radio. I'm trying. Um, he is looking at all the earthquakes going on in the United States and surrounding the New Madrid. And some of that activity, I feel, has to do with the, you know the big booms we're talking about. It's not just shaking; we're talking about big booms. I, in the last cycle, that was in Michigan. It's uh, if you want to Google uh, black helicopters, radiation, Michigan, big booms. Then that story came out, and that appears to me to be pressure from being relieved from the calderas out west. Actually, I believe that has to do with the lava tubes and. There, I believe there's hot magma that is racing right now towards the New Madrid and some of these other booms. I got a feeling that there are plugs that are in the lava tubes that are breaking. And the, the magma domes around the planet, if you're listening to Earthplay and the, the commentary, they're bulging. All right? And I think there's a pattern to them. I think the pattern has to do with magnetite, the, the metal deposits that are in our planet. And what's happening is, is that we swing around in orbit now after December 28th. The magnetic portal connection that's between that dark star and our planet is shortening, and now it's beginning to shorten. It's about 30,000 miles per hour per hour now, right? That was lengthening up until December 28th, and now it's shortening. That's the reason you're seeing the seismicity go up, the, the patterns, the quakes, okay? That's the reason you're going to see more and more of these um, of volcanoes spewing out magma continuously, Okay, you're going to see more in the news about super volcanoes that are becoming a lot that are waking up. Oh, now, yeah. No, in Russia, in Siberia, <clears throat> they're just popping left and right. Japan, they're popping. They're popping everywhere. There's just, you know, for somebody to say that the galactic plane is causing this. I mean, it's just like they're all waking up. I'm just waiting for some some something in the northwest to open up. Um, I'm wondering when that shoe's going to drop. But oh. go ahead, Terrell. Yeah, off the coast of um, Oregon and off Baja California, that's where I'm expecting the breach, next breach to happen. The earthquake pattern since 2011 started near the calderas, and the, then now it's branching outward, for farther and farther, and eventually gets offshore, and then it reaches those offshore volcanoes. Because those bangs you're hearing, pretty sure about this, that's the plugs from the last cycle. See, at the end of this cycle, the magma is hot, 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 and it's frothy, and it, it pushes lightweight, and it pushes through very easily. Then after the event's over, the lightweight stuff falls down the sides of the tube and then migrates to the bottom and becomes plugs, plugs up, the, it becomes segments, segmented. Okay. Then when the next cycle starts, everything cools down again. The Earth's kind of normal. Then, see, the metals in the Earth are heating up again, and that's what I was saying. It, it's induction. And the electromagnetism that's coming from this star coming in here is causing the metals inside of our planet to heat up. Okay, But when we're on the backside of the sun, which we were until December 28th, that's when we reached outside orbit position. Now we're orbiting towards the thing. The magnetic portal connection is getting shorter. And then we're also getting influenced externally. We no longer have the protection of the solar wind, which was when we're behind the sun. We have it directly, but then on the when we're at outside orbit, we get a crosswind. We're still 
protected from the external effect by the crosswind of the solar wind. But now where the angle is changing, it's one degree per day. We're talking about 90 days from December 28th to April the 2nd. It's, 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 it's uh, well, three months and three days, actually. So it's just about one degree per day. So each day beyond December 28th is another degree in that 90-degree angle that's closing. And it's a zero angle when we get to April the 2nd. So what I'm expecting is that the magnetosphere is going to try to start flipping around again, just like it did last year on April the, the, uh, it was, uh, March 12th and 13th for about 24 to 28 hours, depending on who's, uh, who, who's reconstructed data you look at. Okay, And it was – guess who it was that informed me about this? Suspicious observers. And without his news, then I, then I would have heard about it later. I would have heard about it probably from Relic from uh, Timothy Paul's group. But anyway – there's an angle that, that we're going to cross. Now, I don't know what that angle is. Now, again, I'm holding my hands in a V. In the center of that V, going straight out towards Leo, there's a uh, that's the alignment date, April the 2nd. Now, how big, how wide is that angle? I don't know yet. But maybe a month before, three weeks before, and, and or a month after, three weeks after, something like that, there's an angle there. Then the magnetosphere is going to, it's going to want to turn around on regular cycles. This is kind of important to realize because this kind of tells us how far the thing is away. So imagine that there's a hub to this mini solar system coming in and that it has spiraling electromagnetic arms around it. Okay, and Now we're looking at something that's like the spokes of a wheel, okay? except for they're twisted. They're turned. They look like the wings of a bird, Okay, and they're spiraling around. That's what's around the magnetosphere. See, it's not directly from the the solar from the particles from the star that's being released if that were true the magnetosphere would turn around for the well the entire month of march and april it's just whenever these electromagnetic arms are swinging through that's when the magnetosphere turns around now the simulator what Carol's talking about is that when you take a look at our galaxy the milky way it has spiraling arms that go all around it um what terrell's saying is that this black star uh it has the same type of effect with their micro protons or their waves, it spirals. And these arms, when they hit us, the last time it hit us, um, which was a year ago, right? That's right. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, uh, it, um, it blew back the, the shock bow, the magnetosphere, the other direction. And so now he's saying that these arms are coming back around so we can expect another anomaly like, um, like what happened last time, right? Right. And I'm hoping that everybody's going to be watching because NASA's going to, they were caught doctoring the data last year whenever suspicious observers caught him. And he reconstructed the data that it's, it's, a, it's in a GIF uh, file that I have at terralo3.com. You subscribe, become a newsletter a subscriber, and inside the Dropbox folder, I've got the GIF right there for you, and you can see magnetosphere flipping around. And in that in that simulation, then it's running for about 28 hours. The you can see that there's a crosswind that's that came through. There's the solar wind goes is going this way. The tail looks fine. The magneto paused, wraps the tail, and then all of a sudden it turns around. And the bow shock's looking at the Leo constellation, and the tail's going well straight at him, looking at the sun. So I'm expecting that to happen again. But it the it, it happened last year on 11 about 11 to 12 day cycles. Now that would, that that gives me some idea how far the the thing is away, because as you get further away from the hub of this thing, then the spokes are further away from you know from each other. So I know last year was 11 to 12 days, and I want to know this year how often NASA is turning off the simulators, because that's the only way I could tell. The only the only event that we were able to see was on March 12th and 13th, but prior to that and after that. NASA was tur- they they couldn't hide the data so they just turned off the simulators. We went there to try to find to get the data and they were turned off. Tried to go to the Russians, they would they weren't giving us any data. Go to the Chinese, they weren't giving us any data. So uh, I think that you know the the world knows, you know there, there's people on the inside, the people that control the data. They know what's happening and they're covering it up. But if we're sharp and we pay attention, I think just the idea just the fact they're turning off the simulators will let us know the duration in between and we can do a comparison to last year because I've got a feeling that this they're going to turn them off on 9 to 10 day cycles. That means this thing is closer than it was last year and then that's going to give me some idea. That's not going to tell me exactly anything. You know, Hopefully we have another year or two before this thing gets here 
but that's some of the, the, the evidence that I'm looking for that they're doctoring the data. And but my point was, what is it that could cause Fukushima and all in these events on the 188 day cycle, and turn the magnetosphere around, and cause the flooding that's going on around the planet? Talking to another YouTuber that covers the flooding and has flood videos from around the world, says it's a big cover up on what's really going on with flooding that's going around, around uh, that's going on around the planet. I'd like to try to get that person on here too. Okay, but what could cause all these things to happen? We're living inside of a, two, a 2012 Deep Impact movie. It's just happening in slow motion, right? And my job is to try to find the patterns and to, and to show you guys so that you know we can figure out what's going on. And with the help of a lot of researchers, the Earth plays the the, the Keith Hunters, Hijacker, Suspicious Observers, uh, the United Knowledge guy, all of us working together. I think that we can build a large picture that's going to give us the answer. I, I don't think that one person can do this. By myself, you know, one person comes under attack. You know, like I come under attack, but I just don't care. Go ahead, and attack me if you want to. But um, with a large group of people working on this type of of project, then it's like a survival group. You know, a large group makes you secure. All right, so I'm hoping that there will be more participation, like on your show right here. We could have five or six people calling in. Yeah, we got a break coming up, Terrell. If you all want to call in three four seven six eight eight two nine. O2, you can talk. Okay, hang on, just two minutes. Okay, welcome back. <clears throat> You're listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. We are listener supported. Everybody at my whole audience out there knows the routine. Um, you know, unless you, you help us out, uh, we can't have the station. It's all to it. Uh, it's, it's non commercial. Uh, we don't have corporate sponsors. So it exists because of enough people out there give support. And, um, I just picked up a few more people that gave um, the station 10 bucks with the Nighthawk Club, I mean the Hijackers Club. So if you could just give 10, 10 bucks a month, you know, uh, especially when I'm on the air to help support the station, it's appreciated. Okay, we're talking about the Brown Dwarf. Well, wait a minute. First, um, this is a changing reality, a day 146 of the most important things. And what we're talking about is the most important thing. In fact, there is nothing more important. Uh, Terrell talked about uh, this, bra this black dwarf or brown dwarf is a master key with what's happening to all the planets in the solar system. I went through my 45 witnesses. I think I'm up to like 57 now. Of All, all the planets are brighter. And something is coming through our system, which is creating everything. I mean, look what the military is doing. Look where they're spending the money, stealing the money. All the underground bunkers, all the, all the Japanese, I mean, the Chinese and the Russian building tunnels, bunkers, ghost cities in the middle of Mongolia, nowhere. I mean, the whole world is is reacting, at least the people in the know. You just take a look at it, buying bullets, buying all the freeze-dried food. I mean, getting ready for complete civil unrest. But anyways, Terrell is probably the top expert on the planet as far as tracking this. This is what he does. Um, this is He concentrates on that because it is the most important thing. It's going to affect us. Uh, now, Terrell doesn't think it's wormwood, but I do. I think it's um, uh, what the Bible calls uh, wormwood. Um, let me just take this call here. So anyways, before I take the call, I did, Terrell, want to make sure that everybody can find out your websites, how they can support you, you know, do your, your deal because you're self-funded too. So go ahead. Okay, yeah, I appreciate it. The only way to support my research is going to terrell03.com. That's T E R A L. And 03.com. When you get there, you're going to see Project Black Star. That's information of, uh, about that came from the Dakota report that I received from Jim Mars. And for vetting, you can see my analysis right there. That's one of the documents that's in the Dropbox folder. That's the, what you receive. It's, you get all the newsletters when you become a newsletter subscriber. That's how you support my research. And then you get all the documentation that I've uploaded from Deacon John from Nighthawk for the last you know year and a half. <clears throat> Pardon me. And um, or if you uh, cannot become a subscriber, if you don't have twenty five dollars laying around, then just make a five or ten dollar donation, and I send you all the information. You just don't have the benefits of my thread analysis and talking to me on Skype and and you know spend a lot of time with you. But you can still have access to all the information for running your own uh, investigation. Okay, that sounds good. And so we got a caller. Uh, I did want to make mention to everybody though, is that um, Ed Harris, I think that's his name, or Rick Harris, Ed Harris. He had an inside source. He did a lengthy interview, and he's released his transcripts. 
of the interview. And this guy's way up in Homeland Security, and he says everything is going, getting ready to go hot um, for an economic collapse. Um, sometime uh, maybe in the spring, March, uh, April. So um, it's a very in-depth interview. I, th I think it's all over the net. So if somebody can find it and post it here in freedomslips.com, we have a, ch we have a, a chat uh, where you can put links in, and then the links are archived. Except for the three I did the other day when the reptilian shapeshifters, I put three links in for people to go to those websites and they got wiped out. Now, what, 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 what do you figure that? I mean, by the time my show was over. But uh, we're talking about the Black Dwarf Star. Uh, this is crazy stuff, folks. I know. I know. Nobody. That's the thing, Terrell. Everything is so wild and so crazy that most people cannot comprehend the, the things that we talk about. Uh, Earth play. I know you're out there. Heisenberg. Come on. You guys, all you, all, you always snipe and take shots and say, this a heavy mass object and the mockery of it all or whatever. And here you got the man and he's in the ring and he's saying, come on, come on in. You guys want to, you, you want to, you want to party? You want to argue about this? You want to actually break things down and be logical? Then come on in. He's got the knowledge, but no, you know, if you want to come on the panel, uh, it'll just be you and Terrell. Uh, and I won't tell, I won't say nothing. I'm, I'm half sick anyway, so I'm hardly no good. Okay, the one thing I wanted to ask you about, Terrell, so call it's 347-688-2902, and, or you can go to Freedom Screen, uh, all lowercase letters, and send me a contact request, and I'll take your, uh, I'll like you or whatever, a 50-year-old man saying, I, I like you, who came up with that, I can't stand it. So, anyways, I'll take the request. Alrighty. So, um, Tara, what I wanted to ask you about is the Russians recently uh, to took a bomb. <laughs> These are Russians, right? There was a huge, huge methane cloud uh, in the Arctic that was starting to move over to Siberia, and they calculated that if the methane cloud had gone into these villages, and it was really dense. Uh, that people could have died in their sleep. In other words, um, there was not enough oxygen and it was just huge. And so the Russians, they set a damn bomb. They set a, set a bomb off and uh, literally set the whole thing on fire and burned it out. But the stuff is still coming up through the ice. So how would the methane, how would this phenomenon, this huge methane coming out of the Arctic and building up, how does that jive with... Um, your master key of the Black Dwarf Star. Go ahead. Yeah, that's that's another story that's on the video. If you go to my YouTube channel, that's Terrell. Oh, my goodness. I have something going in the background. Sorry about that. Um, then that's one of the things that Suspicious Observers covered. And he did an overlay and showed the methane cloud and the melting, the receding ice sheets that are up there. So all this is connected. And... That's great. That's a that's a great part about having the master key is that you can understand what's going on here. The the beginning of this process of what's going on there comes from the dark star in the electromagnetism it's releasing. Then that ma electromagnetism that's being sent two ways externally and through the uh, through the magnetic portal connection, okay, is being received by earth metals. Now, any of you guys that bought a new wave cooker, all right, just Google new wave cooker. It works by induction. You can set an ice cube on that guy and cook, but everything heats up with the metal. It's because it's used the, the electromagnetism. That's the new technology. Well, you can kind of understand what's happening here but, and they, uh, through that process. Okay. Now, th then the next part of the, the, the key to understand, the next puzzle piece, is the magnetite, the metal distribution in our planet, the largest being under the North Pole. So now you can kind of make the connection that there's extra heat that's coming from down there because it's being gathered by that magnetite and it's being dispersed into the core. Then the, the ice wants to melt. If you notice, the ice sheets in the South Pole are not melting, are they? So if, if, this, if, the, if the effect was caused by global warming, then we should expect that both ice sheets are going to melt evenly and it's not happening that way. So the northern, the northern ice sheets are melting faster and this methane, this gas that's coming underneath is because that's what's on the bottom like it sets on on the bottom of a lake, right? Then all of a sudden something shakes and the, the bubbles come up. Well, you've got a lot of activity going on underneath the ice and under the North Pole with that heat. 
and it's causing that methane that would it, it would sit there for a long time and then maybe be released gradually slowly naturally but instead since we're, the earth is going through well it's like a woman on the birthing table right and the birth pangs are getting closer together there's sometimes they're going apart like september 26 2012 to december 28th when the magnetic portal connection was lengthening the earth was receiving less magnetism now we're heading back towards leo that magnetic portal connection is shortening, and we're seeing all these earth changes. It's pretty easy for me to predict when these earth changes are going to start happening. Everything's going to start getting violent and rock and rolling here shortly. About the third week in March, between now and then, you're going to see things escalate even more because that, the magnetic portal connection right now has shortened. It's uh, shortening by 30,000 miles per hour. And then wait until the third week in March. It's going to be 60,000 miles per hour. And then you're, So you're going to see the effect on the North Pole getting worse, not better. That situation there is going to continue to get worse, and then we're going to come to the alignment at 4-2. On April the 2nd, we're going to be in alignment, so that's whenever we're in nearest proximity to that thing. And then we're going – all of a sudden, we're going to the same section of the solar system where it's going. And if it's here, then we, that's the reason I believe that we're seeing a convergence in the different data. So the remote viewers, I know you can talk about that. They're talking about an event that has to happen before March I'm sorry, May the 20th, right? And our, I, I've done the uh, modeling, and I've drawn the lines around the elliptical curve for the, the object that creates the 188-day cycle, and it says May the 17th is the date that we're going to cross its orbit path going about 66,000 miles per hour. Okay, if, So if there's a convergence, see, I've got – I watched the modeling. I watched the 2.5 to 4 magnitude quakes. It tells me how fast caterpillar crawl is going, and I'm also looking at the periphery of the calderas to tell if they're if it's from the calderas bulging or if it's tectonic okay but from april on we are going to have this event on april the 2nd trust me okay it could be i was 40 hours off last year with guerrero but it's just going to be right about that time we're going to pass through that trough and then i have to watch very carefully i'm looking for the flip of the magnetosphere and i'm also looking at the uh the, the seismicity of the planet and the volcanism because if if, if that goes off the charts that means that we're converging on the same point in space, and that would be the point where the Earth is on May the 17th in orbit. Okay, and if that's if that's the scenario that's happening, then I would expect that the world governments are going to start reacting prior to that. The geopolitics, what's happening here, is going to reveal what's happening. And also, well, it's a little bit complicated to explain. I'm not supposed to go into it that much, but my group, my research group, which had more than 300 members, had to be disbanded last year because we were coming up on this event right here. And um, Billy Hayes can. Billy Hayes was just on. He's a very important member of our group, by the way. He was just on with Earthplay, right? And we stumbled onto artificial intelligence, nanotechnologies, chemtrailing. We were connecting all the dots together with a lot of gifted people, and the, the uh, my people came under attack. And we're talking about using the new technology, the, the nano, the, uh, the, the nanos that are inside of your body and my body right now. But I don't talk about it a lot. So anyway. The artificial intelligence is going to tell us if this thing's here because if he allows me to continue pushing the envelope and waking people up and talking about this stuff, that means it's here. Okay, It's going to come on this orbit cycle. If it's coming on next orbit cycle, so the next orbit cycle begins in the first week in January next year. If it's coming on the next orbit cycle, he's going to shut me down by, by, by my, my friends, my family. They're all going to be turned off. That's what happened to him last cycle. Okay, so I'm taking a little bit of a chance out here, but I, I'm, I'm like you said, I'm on this case, and I'm tenacious like a bulldog, and I'm going to stay with it, just like I did decoding scripture, decades to do that, and just like decoding 9/11, took five years to do that. Now, this isn't now I'm in my third year on this, and this is my, my primary investigation. I'm going to work at it every single day until I know what the truth is about it. But those are the signs that I'm looking for. Some of them. So um, there, there are other things that I'm doing. I work, I work with not just um, geologists, not just astronomers, but with doctors that are talking about bipolar condition in people and people with thousands of people in their, you know, their own clinics and stuff. And they're telling me about the bipolar condition, how it has increased 40 times since 2003 and how it's getting worse. People are very much disoriented more and more and more. It's becoming, you know, pretty obvious. And that seems to be a symptom of the the bipolar uh, condition is a symptom of this thing that's coming because the Earth has two magnetic portal connections connected to it. 
on the back side of the orbit, they're flip-flopping. On the near side of the orbit, they're on the opposite sides of the planet. They become a straight line on April the 2nd, and they were at a 90-degree angle on December 28, 2012, just recently. So now that angle is opening up. It's di diverging magnetic portal connections is what we have. And that's, in my view, what causes the mass animal deaths. Because there's some there's, – I can't say exactly – how it what exactly what's going on but the magnetic lines get twisted whenever these mag, these the flip-flopping magnetic portal connections change over into the diverging and that happens at outside orbit december 28th so just after that date is then i'm saying hey guys the animals are getting ready to start dying you know dying again and as that angle gets bigger that angle opens up opens up opens up then that seems to be the trigger the magnetosphere something is going on particularly in the northern hemisphere Maybe it has to do with that magnetite deposits there. Maybe there's a, a magnetic vortex, the hole that's created, and uh, along the, the periphery of that hole, the magnetic lines are being twisted so that in, the animals that are trying to go south are actually going um, east and west. And I think that there's, you know, there, I have to do more more research into that area, but there's a pattern here, and the, the animals are are dying, uh, you know, about 11 days later each year, and that fits with my 188 day cycle perfectly so i'm looking at a lot of data not just earthquakes not just volcanoes you know there's a lot of data going into this and the methane gas that you're talking about that's one of the symptoms and it just if, if you look in the proximity kamchatka that's where they had those 10 volcanoes go off in within one week you know now you have volcanoes that are just spewing there and i don't know if that's going to stop you know i could be wrong about that because there's more that i have to understand about the the uh, the underground rivers, you know, the sub subterranean rivers of magma, because I don't know if that's always constant, and I think that has a lot to do with this, uh, with these, with the volcanism that's going on. So there's still a lot that I have to understand. That's why I can use help from people like Earthplay and you know the you know in the geology department. Um, just listening to his commentary helps me to understand more about what's going on inside of the Earth. You're basically saying that uh, underneath is heating up. And as it's heating up and things are moving, we've actually gotten a lot of earthquakes in the Arctic. Uh, gotten a couple of pair of eights uh, near Greenland. I mean, you know, they never had earthquakes up there before. I mean, not, not like this. Maybe once in a blue moon or something. But, <clears throat> you know, earthquakes in the Arctic, uh, fives and sixes uh, over the last uh, year or so. And so you're saying basically the... The ground is breaking up, and that's re that's releasing the sealed methane uh, that's buried below. Well, the Earth in general is is growing because extra magnetism from that secondary source and the, the, from the metals, the magma getting hotter displaces more space. So the Earth in general is trying to grow. So you're seeing tectonic plates that are coming apart um, down in, over in the over in the off of Asia, you know, sa south. There's plates out there that are coming apart. I'm having difficulty understanding how the sun can cause this. This seems to be, you know, it's, it's like an egg. The Earth's like, a, you know, the crust on the outside. That's what holds it together. That's what gives it strength and rigidity. The Earth's like an egg. But whenever you, whenever you increase the size of the inside, it's got to break somewhere. And that's what appears to be happening. So th to me, that explains why the volcanoes are going off because the hot magma has to go somewhere. Right, and eventually it's, it's get, making its way into the cracks. It's so that it's the t the plates that they, they, they slide easier, right? So the caterpillar crawl that's happening along the tectonic plate lines, that, that the rate of that increases, and that gives us more earthquakes. Particularly whenever that connection, the magnetic portal connection, is getting shorter. Okay, and that's what we're seeing right now. Whenever that connection is getting longer, what we're really measuring is the Earth's ability to maintain equilibrium. Right. So whenever that connection is stretching, the Earth is going, ha, huh, you know, it's, uh, um, it's not under so much strain, right? But whenever we turn the corner, which we did December 28th, then we have the shrinking magnetic portal connection, the earth starts straining again, like the, like the woman on the table having a child under the birth pangs. And see, this kind of ties into my Bible, my, that the, the day of the Lord's coming like a thief in the night, this thing's coming like a thief in the night, and, you know, the, the world is that, is the birth pang. You know the birth. I, can, I recognize the patterns of the birth pang, so I feel like I'm one of the children of light. It's talked about in First Thessalonians chapter five, start at verse one. I recognize the pattern. Something's coming. So um, there's. I'm not claiming to be a geologist like Earthplay to be able to tell you exactly 
um, the conditions that are underneath the North Pole, but the magnetite being there in proximity and the electromagnetism, I think I see that part pretty well. So exactly how that heat is in the, the methane, I, I, I don't pretend to know the answers to that, but it doesn't surprise me because I'm looking at the ice sheets and they're deteriorating too. There's a few people that got a couple questions in chat. Uh, one, uh, Donja, she says that at that eight point earthquake in the Solomon Islands, it rang the earth like a bell. Yeah, that's the, the global, the, was characterized as global compression quakes. Is actually, yeah, the, a global ringer. I think that's what suspicious observers call it. Um, we've been seeing that quite a lot lately. You know, the, all the seismic servers on the planet showing the same wave. That's going to be reverberation from that event that, that, goes through the earth is a wave that goes through the earth and so you're going to notice that there's a pattern on the ones that are on the opposite side of the planet aren't the the the, the graph is the chart isn't going to show the high high waves at like the ones that are right there next to it so you, you'll notice a pattern there that reverberation inside of the earth is what that is yeah <clears throat> yeah i see that's for sure but you know the other big sign and you can tell something's going on is just how crazy all of these governments are acting and I mean, I mean, just like I wanted to get your take on this. This was um, in the Daily Mail for about two hours. It wasn't even two hours. It was less than an hour, I think. But somebody snatched it uh, before they could take it down. But uh, Obama administration had released papers saying that um, they were going to deliver chemical weapons into Turkey and they were going to give the chemical weapons to the uh, rebel forces against Syrian President Bashir Assad, and they were going to set him off, and then all these bunch of you know men, women, and children all cough to death and die, and then the Obama administration was going to bring blame uh, Bashir Assad, and that would kick off you know a NATO airstrike and invasion of Syria. So, what do you make of that um, article that slipped out and it's it's gone now? I mean, do you think they're going to start this war in the Middle East? I mean, what do you think? It sounds like somebody's frustrated. That, sounds, that looks like frustration. Think tankers are trying to figure out how to get that central bank, the Rothschild-owned central bank inside of Syria, so they can turn the focus onto Iran. That's what they're trying to do. They've been, try, they've been stuck in the same quagmire, the same situation. They, they tried to use uh, Turkey. That's, that's what they've been trying to do because they need somebody to beat – they need a, somebody about the same size to try to hit the head over – Syria. This is similar to the Palestinians being used against Israel, similar to Israel used against Iran. But there's people that the the the, the banksters, the banksters are trying to to you know start a war in order to well they're trying to create conditions for a peace treaty. I don't think that they can you know I've said this before on the show that there's no way they can straight they can they can cut off the Strait of Hormuz because China needs that oil to flow through there. And since they've got a seat on the Security Council, they're never going to vote for any, you know, just traditional let's go attack uh, China, uh, Iran. That's not going to work. Um, but they have, they're at a stalemate still. Even after the Russians pulled out of Syria, they're still at a stalemate over there. How come? And why does it even matter? Who cares? So the, 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 this sounds like that they're trying to build a case against Saddam Hussein. Remember that? There was the weapons of mass destruction. Oh, we got, you know, whenever all the time. The reason that they were going after Saddam Hussein had nothing to do with anything that he was doing other than he was refusing to denominate his oil wealth in U.S. dollars. It was all about to do with the finances under the Henry Kissinger Agreement from the mid-1970s. He was going to back out, and then he was going to lead the Middle East away from the U.S. dollar. That's the reason that they went to war right there. And then they established a central bank inside of Afghanistan. The CIA started uh, the poppy trade over there. And now they're working on Iran, uh, on Syria because Rothschild, the House of Rothschild, sent them there. There's no other reason for there to be all this focus, all this time on that country. Who cares? It's, but the reason is because this is a monopoly game, and Boardwalk now is – well, Park Place actually – is Syria. And the, re the only reason that there's high value on Syria is because Rothschild doesn't have a central bank there. That's the only reason why. That's the reason that Gaddafi was killed. And murdered because, but he didn't have the he didn't have the allies that uh, Iran has in China and Russia. Okay, that's the only reason. But um, 
but boardwalk that's that's Iran but, on, but only the house of Rothschild um, the, all these are the United States the UK the World Bank the uh, IMF all of these other are lap dogs for the house of Rothschild so when you clear it away forget about the oil it has nothing to do with oil you, mm -hmm. you pay the same price to the rebels that you would pay to anybody else for the oil it doesn't mean anything it's about currency currency creation fiat currency the house of Rothschild then so that he can gobble up the wealth just like he took all the wealth from the Americans the Americans are now 200 to 300 trillion dollars in debt because of the house of Rothschild and there's now they're, they're Rothschild lap dogs they're exactly doing what Hitler did in World War II and except for there's no allied forces to go to take Obama out and Bush out but that that's the new uh, uh, the Fourth Reich is going on in the United States but they're doing a better game of propaganda over there in the United States, over there in the uh, Middle East, and it's all about central banking, and it's actually kind of disgusting when you think about it. But I don't see the war happening. I see conditions for a peace treaty happening. That's the only way, because the Russians that are that are have built those nuclear power plants and they're maintaining those power plants. That's like attacking Russia. If you, there's no way Israel is going to attack those nuclear power plants, and they have just as much right to have nuclear power as anybody. That Iran has not attacked anybody in a hundred years. Uh, three hundred years. <clears throat> okay, like so. Up. Yeah, listen, we're coming up to the top of the break, and I've uh, got an unknown call or another one. Uh, you, you got a question real quick if we can slide it in? Uh, you got to wait. Uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Okay, here we go. You're listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. We have a chat room. We are listener supported, so if you can go to freedomslips.com, um, uh, we got a donate button. Uh, T-shirts, coffee mugs, anything that you can do with a survival store. We got an EMP-proof bullet uh, in case we have to worry about a giant solar flare. I'm, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Terrell about that in a minute. Um, uh, even NASA said late uh, 2012 in the fall or in early spring of 2013, they fear a, a Carrington event, a giant solar flare. They wiped that out, too. They, they took that back, too. They just lie about everything. They just shut everything off. Just keep us in darkness. Anyways, let me get through this. So this is Changing Reality, <clears throat> edition 146, where I deal with the most important things. And uh, I have a few more questions for Terrell, and we got another unknown caller that called. But first, uh, Terrell, just uh, one more time, unless you repeat, it's like politics, unless you repeat where people can find out where your stuff's at, it slips by them. So uh, go ahead and repeat it, and then I got a, a caller for you. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah, the way to support my research and to get more information on what's going on is going to terrell03.com. That's terrell03.com. You'll be looking at Project Black Star information. You'll get to read the Coda Report. You can download it. And the lettered agencies, uh, the operatives that put out that report talked about genocide that were, they were trying to avert connected to Project Black Star. It was then I realized that's the project that I've been working on. And um, so that's available there. And then you become a newsletter subscriber. I put out 52 issues per year. One comes out every Thursday. And I just released one, by the, um, by the way. And uh, you get my books, The Mystery Explained, and The 9-11 Truth, Exposing the Cheney Rumsfeld Black Operation. Um, that, those are in P PDF form right there in the Dropbox folder, along with lots and lots of other information. And it's $25 per year. You get two years of newsletters for that last year and this year and if you can't afford that then five or ten bucks and I'll send you everything um, it's just you, you don't have the privileges of a, a full-fledged subscriber they, they get a lot of other benefits and I want to remind you that I, every Saturday night it looks like it's gonna be every Saturday night I've been working over at Freedomizer with Valerie Ann and Riker they uh, they want to know more about the Bible code the um the, I, what I figured out was how to decode the Bible Spirit witnesses, blood witnesses, and water witnesses. There are tons of them in scripture, charts, all that stuff's in the Mystery Explained book. It took decades to gather research, and that's the, uh, that's the way I do things. The 9-11 book that's in there, that was after five years of research. Now I'm on the third year of this one. And there's a Project Black Star book that's, that will be coming out, and it will go in that Dropbox folder for newsletter subscribers. So I'll remind you that I have Tarot Investigates. That's my radio show. That's on Fridays, 10 o'clock, Awaken. That's Eastern Time at awakenradio.net over there with Donna Devane. Thank you, Bo Bear. She's sitting over here, I'm sure, right here at, in the chat room. Revolution Radio. She's my sponsor over there. And um, 
And I'm with Valerie Ann at Freedomizer. Again, that's on Saturdays at 1030. And they want to know more about 9-11. They have a lot of questions on a lot of things. Pretty excited about going over there. We have, have done a lot of radio shows there at Freedomizer with uh, Donnie Gilson and with the Pharaoh. And now I'm working with Valerie Ann and, and Riker over there, having fun over there on Saturday nights. And that's pretty much it. Hijacker, your mic. Okay. Um, so we do have an unknown caller. Um, so unmute your mic, unknown caller. What's your name, and do you have a question for Terrell? I don't know. What... Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Do you have a Do you have a uh, question for Terrell? What's your name? Uh, Bernie. Oh, Bernie. How you doing, Bernie? Listening to your show, very interesting about the uh, tilt of the earth, and I uh, sent you some emails about China. They got. Pictures of uh, two or three different suns in, in the morning, sun, in, as it's rising in the morning. Have you seen that yet? I've seen hundreds. I, I've seen so many now that I hardly even look at them. It's, I, I shouldn't, um, but I don't know. Uh, Terrell, can you speak about this? I mean, this is a phenomenon that, and I go out and I look through sunglasses, and now I got my welder's goggles and. I'm always trying to do it, and yeah. Go ahead. Those, the, those are generally lens flares. They're anomalies in the photography. If you actually look, you're not going to see them. Yeah, but you see them with your naked eye too. Why is that? Well, you'd have to. You, see, the thing is, you have to show me a picture, <laughs> and I'm I'm just really difficult for me to believe because whenever whenever I look out there at the sun, there's always one of them. So. The uh, the pro the problem uh, is also. Any, I'm sorry. Do you have an email address? I'll send you what I got. So I'm on the Skype. Yeah, okay. send, you just sent it to me right here at Skype. Yeah, and that way I can take a look at it, and I'll tell you whether I've seen it before because I don't miss much. I've seen hundreds of them, like hijacker, and it's going to be a lens flare or some other anomaly. The um the object that's creating the pattern of seismicity is in the Leo constellation. We're going to be in, a, in a, between those two objects on April the the second. So if you think about it, it's like having a full moon. There's no way you can have a full moon in the sun in, a, in the same picture, right? The, what I don't have is a dual pattern of seismicity. Uh, in other words, the earthquake pattern for the object is on the 180-day cycle. It points towards the Leo constellation. Not any other constellation is doing that. Well, wouldn't okay? you say, Terrell, that then what we're doing is we're coming into – we have to worry about a solar flare. We're coming in maybe a kill zone where, I mean, the sun's being quiet, but I think the sun, um, who probably does have is some kind of celestial being or conscious, I really do believe that. Um, I think the sun's seen this thing coming and goes, oh, you again. You, this time I'm going to knock your head. And I think the sun's just being quiet. Uh, getting well, I, what I think is the sun's in the throes of another heliosphere. So it's this other – this. say our solar system has a reach. The pressure shocks out about 100 astronomical units. Well, this little mini solar system has a reach too. It appears that this thing coming in is the, is the twin of our sun. It's, but it's, it was larger earlier in, in their lives. So that our sun was the smaller sister to it. But that sun being larger burned out faster. And when it imploded, it became this dwarf. And they, they orbit one another – Apparently, every 3,600 years. Uh, that seems to be what's going on. And, in, you know, so the sun is in the throes of another, uh, the heliosphere of this thing that's coming in here. And the, the X-class flares have been happening on the last two cycles whenever the Earth, see, the Earth is a contributor in this thing. I agree with suspicious observers. The planets are a player in, you know, in what's going on with the sun. So whenever the, the Earth comes around in orbit, in the in the month of March, now and now in early April, then the X class flares happen, you know, leading up to and just behind. So the month of March and the month of September, we had more X class flares than the rest of the year, on the last two cycles. Well, why is that? Because the Earth is a contributor, and that thing coming from space, is is uh, well, 
it's it's being a threat to the sun. So even a comet or an asteroid, when it gets near the sun, it's coming in towards perihelion. The sun throws out a flare at it. It's a def- it's a defense mechanism of our sun. This so the sun feels threatened by what's out there in Leo. I feel, and whenever the Earth gets comes into alignment with it, that's when the flare comes out because it's feeling it. It's feeling the Earth's presence and that star's presence at this time, and there goes there comes the X class flare. At least that, that that's the best I've been able to make out of the September the the September and March. X class flares that we've had the last two cycles. Well, I watch the sun all of the time, and um, um, when you see these big giant coronal holes, when the, when the sun turns towards you, um, you know that that would give you a little heads up. But as soon as you hear uh, of any more solar flares, because we're we're coming into alignment, basically our sun and then our Earth is between the sun and this black dwarf star, like an alignment, and we're in the middle. Um, and so um, that's what's going to happen on April 2nd. But even before that, the sun could throw a huge flare out. So um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, Terrell, I know you don't deal with comments much, but because it's so unusual, uh, I finally heard the mainstream media uh, say that they have never, um, there. this has never happened in any kind of recorded history of uh, this DA-14, a planet grazer, where it came so close that it grazed into the top part of our atmosphere and it grazed out. And they basically admitted that that has never happened before and it's going to be one of the closest ones ever. Uh, and if it did hit, uh, Heisenberg did the calculations, it would be a, like a 9.5 uh, earthquake. That's how much energy. But uh, what do you say about DA-14? Did it come from uh, Leo and what's its deal? Yeah, that was one of the, the – when Michael Owens took over my my desktop, he was my lead astronomer and the feature writer for the newsletter, by the way. Whenever you get the newsletter, you, you're going to look at uh, volume number nine from 2012. But the, the, the feature article is by Michael Owens. You're going to see a lot of illustration. And he, he was using a net new NASA program. And um, DA-14 was one of the the – the uh, asteroids that w- that he was showing me that was coming out of the Leo constellation. Um, it's going to miss us by about 17,000 miles. It's going to come through the gravity well. It's going to change its orbit period, but it's just going to miss. It's going to be a swing and a miss. You know, if, when you strike out, it doesn't matter how much you missed it by, in my view. But whenever I first saw this, maybe six months ago, because like, you know, like you just said, I, you know, I'm interested very much in this dark star. I'm not so interested in comets and asteroids and things but whenever it comes up so many times and i have to go look i have to go look at the orbit diagram and da14 was the closest one that i've ever seen um but it is going to be a it, it is going to be a miss it's just going to be a near miss about yeah. seventeen thousand miles away uh the other thing somebody brought up about the spring equinox is coming up right around uh uh march 7th 21st. Or, what's 21st. That? march 21st march 21st so um, that's always good for uh, something or another. Uh, it seems like uh, I don't know when the next full moon is, but I got to start watching this stuff. All these alignments because <clears throat> I used to watch it all the time. Um, and there is something to say when planets line up and full moons and stuff like that. It does seem to cause some earthquakes. Uh, there's a correlation there. Go ahead. Yeah, that's enhancing situations. And the moon can be a big contributor because it's so close to us. Whenever it lines up with other things, you know that's that you know, that's part of the equation. So you're talking about the equinox that happens twice a year. So remember, the Earth tips backwards and forwards 23 and a half degrees. It's leaning on its side on December the 21st and June the 21st, all the way over, and it stands back up again, perfectly straight with the ecliptic plane of the of the you know with the sun, the sun plane, the solar plane, and the Earth plane. The celestial plane, they match, they're equal on March 21st and September 23rd on the front side and on the back side of the orbit. So um, you know, that in itself is not going to cause anything, but it's whenever you have alignments of the, of the planets and objects, particularly if it's another star and it's nearby, then uh, if there's a, if I remember right, uh, Neptune is going to be really, really close whenever the star is in alignment with us. And uh, the moon's at a right angle to us, so that that's not going to be that's not going to be a consideration. But still, the uh, these are going to be enhancers, and something has to be ready to go. 
So you, th there's not going to be a clear pattern. If, you know, if Jupiter and the moon, then you have, you know, the closest object and the biggest object in the solar system, then you're going to, it's good, uh, that week, you know, leading up three days before, three days after, you can have several sixes. So that's what I call cavitation, shaking. That happens when you go through a trough of one of the big planets, but uh, generally, I don't even follow the, the the planetary alignments that much. That's an enhancing situation. And if something's not ready to go, if everything just went, nothing's ready to go. It's, they just come right on by, and nothing happens. Uh huh. Well, you know, one thing I don't understand is we've got. I mean, it's only like 157 feet in diameter. It's not very big. What I don't understand is why we don't, uh, you know, hit it with the missile. And just shatter it, um, you know, into a bunch of chunks. It's no and need. What's it's going to miss by 17,000 miles. The next time it's going to be anywhere near is 2046. Uh -huh. just, just, just let it fly by. It's a miss. It's, it's kind of like YU-55. People got excited about YU-55 last cycle. And I didn't even make a video about it. You know, it's just a swing and a miss is a miss. You know, it's, gonna, it's, it's, it's just going to fly right by. Right, and you've taken... Um, uh, a 2012 S1 off the table as being the black star? Definitely. It's an inclination of 61 degrees. It's coming out of a space above Cancer. And it's definitely an Oort cloud object. It came from beyond, further in space than Lovejoy. Lovejoy is 156 astronomical units. This thing's from further away because its velocity is faster. So it's uh, definitely an Oort cloud object. It's, it's a uh, I saw reports that it's developing a tail. I actually think it's the coma, shape of the the, the odd shape of the coma, and the d directionality of the camera is just inside of Jupiter orbit. It's traveling about forty five thousand miles per hour, and it's gaining speed going around the sun at perihelion. It should be going about a million and a half. Lovejoy was going a million three, and this and th this guy's faster, you know. It's, but it's still it's kind of amazing that it felt it's fallen from so far out. Gets inside of Jupiter orbit. That's five astronomical units, and it's still only going forty thousand miles per hour. But that's just the way it works. These uh -huh. uh, these comets at this point they're still slow movers, and then whenever they get further, they'll, it's just going to be inside of Earth's speed, going ninety thousand miles per hour. But by the time it gets to the Sun, it's going to accelerate, falling down to that gravity well, and it's going to be going over a million. Well, one thing I don't understand, Terrell, this thing is so close to us now that um, you know it's sort of a way they tell about planets going around suns. As soon as the planet goes around the sun, then they get the outline of it. Well, why wouldn't we get the reverse outline? As this thing's coming towards us, um, it will start, you know, you know, it will be crossing distant, distant stars, so they would disappear as this thing's coming at us, and then they would reappear. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, you're talking about the dark star. Right. It's because of micro-lensing. So you see what's in the distance all the time. It's, it'd be just nice if you just saw a black hole. The astronomers could find it easy. But you can't. It doesn't work that way. So that gravity well is very narrow at the top, and it reaches so far down in the bottom, it's, it's kind of like filling up your sock with lead. And so it pulls way down, and it's so far below the, the top of that well that when you look across, when you look at it, you're seeing the stars in the distance, and it's just perfect microlensing. So with a white dwarf star that began, then the, the, the outer skin is wrapped by protons. They're talking about a peripheral dwarf, one that's created with the solar system, the solar disk out on the periphery. So whenever the dust starts condensing, just like with our sun, there's insufficient mass for the ignition. So the what happens is that well keeps getting deeper and deeper, and those the the, the dust beats against one another until the 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 bonds are broken of the that hold the molecules together. So then you just have subatomic particles. The smaller stuff races to the middle. And at first, the, that well gets deeper and deeper and deeper with the consolidation of all that, those particles. And then the, so the, the subatomic particles released as photons hit the bottom of the well first, and then the electrons wrap that because there's no friction. They, they go so much faster. Then the neutrons pile in on top of those, and then the protons are last because every time they bang into each other, they slow down in velocity, reaching the center. Then you have a white dwarf, the one that's releasing its protons. Okay, and then after it releases all of its protons, and this is going to be a transitional dwarf. It's going to transition in, uh, into a brown dwarf. So the white dwarfs were just some time ago. The first brown dwarf was discovered in 1995. Nobody's ever seen a black one. 
That's whenever it only has the subatomic particles, you know, the electrons, and the subatomic particles release as photons. And the, what happens is, is that the well at the beginning of the transition is, is wider, right? So the ratio to the depth to the width is, is not so great. But as this thing transitions, as it loses its protons and then the neutrons, then the well isn't getting that much shallower, but it's getting way narrower. So you can see the white guys. You can see the brown guys using um, um, infrared, but no, the technology to see a black dwarf star hasn't been developed yet. You cannot see it. So when people talk to me about the double signs, and uh, I know it has nothing to do with my object, as I know astronomers, they're they're my friends, and they own observatories, and they have infrared equipment, and they they know where to look, and we can't see it. So they're you know that that's just the way it goes. This thing is coming literally like a thief in the night. But also the astronomers inside of that Dropbox folder, when you become a subscriber, you'll read. Um, the, the European correspondent he put out the the dead astronomer report. Uh, it's about seventy astronomers ha have been murdered engaged in dark star imaging research since 1997. So the, the part of the reason is micro lensing that we can't see it. The other reason is because these these astronomers that would allow us to see it by bringing new technology are being identified as threats, and they're being systematically removed from the planet. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, all the different uh, government movements, but in particular, uh, this one cop um, in L.A., uh, he shot three cops, uh, killed a couple of cops' kids, and um, uh, he's going hunting. I mean, he's, uh, he's a big, big thing for action, that's for sure. I mean, he's, he's a black fella, and he's mad about the racism in the department, and he's talking about hunting these cops down on the south side one by one saying they're high-value targets, and, um, you know, do you think this is a PSYOP? Do you think the, they're trying to set up a black king? Because he wrote a manifesto, which was, um, uh, actually, he was a good writer. Uh, talked about honor and this and that, um, uh, justice, and I'm just wondering if they're, this wasn't a false flag and they're trying to set up a black king that will raise up an army from L.A., and, you know, to where if the L.A. breaks apart, sort of the gangs will take over, but <clears throat> what's your take on all this stuff? That in Pennsylvania, they're, the police of Florida, they're going to stop one out of five cars. Um, I mean, all the, all the government activity. Go ahead. Well, if Americans are willing to allow their God-given rights, we're not talking about the Constitution. The Constitution just lists some of the rights that were granted by our Creator, right? And nobody can take those away. Anyone that tries is a tyrant. The um, you, you kind of surprised me with the uh, what's going on out there in in L.A. With the um, you know, I don't really have an answer for that one. Everything is not a uh, CIA. The, remember that the CIA infiltrates everything. Um, everything is not a CIA op. But the, I know that their pro their primary objective is to identify Lone Wolf. Whenever you realize that, then a lot of what there's, what's going on makes sense. They're trying to stir Lone Wolf into action because they need to identify him before they go to the underground arc cities. And there are too many Rambos in the United States. So th this stuff about taking your guns, the government is incompetent. They're, in, they're incapable of going door to door and taking our guns away. There, there's, like I said, there's too many Rambos. And they've got to go to sleep at night. So who's going to go? Are you going to go? <laughs> You're going to go take in Arkansas. I have a lot of friends in Arkansas now. You're going to go door to door and take their guns. It ain't happening. There's no law enforcement that's ever going to do it. The, the, the law enforcement's already uh, not welcome in most of the places there. Um, and there's nobody that's going to do it. But um, maybe you're looking at programming, but things are not as they appear generally. And I, I would have to look at the data more to know if you're looking at. Um, Sleeper ops, if you're, you know, what kind of operation that you're looking at. There's so many different kinds. There's so many kinds of operatives out there. It, even just after 9 11, it was, things were much easier to, to be able to figure out what's going on. Now there's so many uh, different kinds of operatives that are out there. They're bumping into each other. It's kind of difficult to tell um, exactly, exactly what's going on. But I know Lone Wolf is the biggest consideration. That's a lot of brain power for artificial intelligence is spent. And these programs that they're running, these uh, Aurora shooting, these shootings and things, 
th a lot of this is geared towards figuring of getting Lone Wolf to make a mistake because generally he works alone and he's very careful about the way he purchases he buys things and they, they want to begin they have to see pattern pattern recognition very important and hang on Terrell we'll be right back in just two minutes going for a break folks hang on okay you're listening to revolution radio at freedomslips.com uh, this is changing reality uh, the 146th edition um, of the most important things uh, we're talking about the black dwarf star uh, that's ripping through our uh, solar system creating all these anomalous planets and all of the different environmental political uh, economic weather uh, just everything everything people what people are doing is um, what's happening people going crazy we were just talking about this one uh, uh, black cop who got fired and he basically went postal and now he says he's going to hunt down all these white cops on the south side. I mean, you ought to read this manifesto. It's 12 pages. Uh, well written, by the way. Uh, very well written. Too well written, my, in my opinion. But uh, he's got that base of knowledge, too. I mean, he was highly decorated, a top sniper everywhere he went. Uh, they got a problem with this guy. They got a problem with this guy. But I'm on the line. We're talking about the Black Dwarf Star. We're talking with uh, uh, Terrell uh, is this 03 or did you got changed to Z, 03, Terrell? Uh, it's been always Terrell 03. 03. But right. my YouTube is really Terrell 03. They closed me down once, so I went to the big O in that. But um, yeah, on my website is Terrell 03 and Skype Terrell 03. It's pretty much Terrell 03 everywhere except for my YouTube channel. I see. And I do have a couple of callers. Uh, 1712. He's sort of is hanging on the line because his computer crashed. But if you want to jump in here for any questions for Terrell, go ahead. And then the other one is uh, Bernie, uh, who used to work in black ops. Now, he's seen some really strange stuff. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, uh, Bernie, um, was there any talk of Planet Nibiru or a black dwarf star or another body coming through? I mean, did you have you heard anything? In, in, in that world that you come out of, which is just a wild world. It's hard to believe, but I don't know what to believe anymore. So, I mean, I'm punch drunk. But anyways, Bernie, did you hear anything about this Black Dwarf Star? Okay, I guess he's got it muted. But, um, no, they don't, uh, I'm just looking at uh, the movements, uh, Terrell, of the government. And uh, everything just seems to be heating up. I mean... I can't even understand why they left Obama president. Why wouldn't they get a sort of a, a predator that could be cloaked uh, like Romney to do all the bidding? Why they would use a black president to try to take us into this uh, next level, thinking he can take guns or take us into martial law and just upset the whole whole country split. I mean, look at this stuff. Uh, yeah, and I just thought the only thing I could think of is that they're out of time. I think that your scenario, that it's, it's not going to be uh, next year, that it might be this year, I'm thinking it's going to be this year, April 22nd. I mean, April 2nd, we're going to get uh, one hell of a shaker. I mean, I'm thinking 9, 9, 5, 10. Um, so I'm just saying is what I'm seeing the government do, it, it, it doesn't it seem to you that they appear racing through all this legislation and just crazy stuff they're doing Sandy Hook and not even setting up the operation correctly. Don't you think it's they're out of time and they're uh, they're racing and that maybe this black dwarf is right on us? Go ahead. Well, um, it's difficult. Uh, part of it's probably because it's one thirty in the morning. But I, uh, the beginning, the first question that you ask and the last one you ask. A little bit, it's throwing me a little bit. So with, with Obama, instead of Romney, he's a CIA operative. The CIA is controlling the puppet government of the United States. They didn't want Romney in there. They wanted somebody that was controllable. So the, 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 between Bush and Obama, then you have Hitler. And it's House of Rothschild that's controlling the United States through the CIA. The real government would be the Council on Foreign Relations. So it's the, their working groups are the people in charge. Like for example, over the super soldier program, it's going to be the CFR people. It's not people that are in our government or in our military. 
then whenever you're asking a black ops guy, he's he's likely a sleeper. That means he's going to be like the the Navy commanders that were pushed right into harm's way. They were called by New York for air support. They ran right into the Pentagon, in, right into the strong room, the safest place in the Pentagon, and they were murdered there by the submunition bomb at number two. So the, the, I've got lots of family in every branch of the military, and I, I can tell you that they don't know what's going on. But the people I know in Navy intelligence, they do know what's going on. So, the, the, my, but my my uh, nephew's a journalist in the Navy, and he doesn't know what's going on. So, you know, the the, the Navy intelligence is not even telling the Navy people. You know, so that there's an elite in the military too, and those are the ones that are going to the underground Ark City. They're the ones that know what's going on. Now, the, the the chances that a black ops guy is going to know what's going on here, he would have to have his head up and be looking at the research, you know, looking at the pattern of seismicity and, you know, the changes in the earth and then put, you know, putting all that together. But those guys are kept pretty busy. So that's part of sleeper ops that I was talking about. It's the orientation. They have to be orientated. They have, they have to be trained and then they're deployed and they're being sent right into harm's way because they, those people become a threat for what's going on. So they want Russians over here in the United States. They want Americans over there in Russia. Because when the crap hits the fan, then the Russian people will take care of the, any American troops that are going to cause any trouble. We, the Americans will take care of any foreign troops that are in our country that cause any trouble. They'd all die. None of them would survive. But that's the way that if I was running the, you know, the shadow government and I looked at these threats, the military, our military, our military would be a threat to the underground Arc City program. They have to be taken out of the way, like the Navy commanders at, at 9-11. That they could have exposed the Global Guardian war game cover by launching those jets. If the Navy jets would have launched off those carriers, they would have seen what was going on. Every, they would have had radar on. They would have known exactly what was going on, and the Navy wasn't let in on the op. The Air Force was let in. So no airmen died in 9-11. You guys realize that? Army and Navy did. So the, part of the, our military attacked part of our military. The, the people that attacked the Pentagon was the Air Force. Those are the people that were running the the uh, the war games, right? For the Joint Chiefs, basically the plane that hit the Pentagon was from a, the Joint Chiefs, the Vigilant Guardian exercise. So the Joint Chiefs knew, the Air Force knew, the airman that was the remote controlling the A3 Skywire that was refitted at Fort Collins Loveland Airport, he knew, all right? So. Those are the people that are in the know. People in our military know, but there's a vast – most of the military do not know what's about to happen here. And the ones that do know are going to the underground arc cities, and they're not going to wake everybody up or their families won't be allowed to go. And if, if they breach you – know, it's real easy to keep the military people in line because they're trained that way. That's the way their minds have been trained since boot camp. So they're going to follow orders. It's easy to keep the secret with those guys. right? But So – you know, if there's a lot more going on than meets the eye with these different operations that are going on, and so it's a little bit difficult whenever you're giving me the example. And uh, you're giving me good examples, by the way, but I'd, I'd have to really look at more of the data to be able to tell what kind of operation that we're looking at. Some of it is to is uh, to smoke out um, lone wolf. That's where they spend a lot of time. Artificial intelligence is. A glutton for more information. So the CIA is infiltrating everything, but not necessarily to put a human being watching you. That's not what it's about. They want to know all your connections so they can feed that information to artificial intelligence that builds simulations, millions and millions of simulations. That's how they catch Lone Wolf, is through the simulations run by artificial intelligence, but he needs the data. So the CIA had to take over Facebook. You know, the lettered agencies have to infiltrate everything because that's the only way they're going to get be on the inside to get all the information that they need. And they're doing it as covertly as possible. Also, an, an, another line on that is nanotechnology. N nanotech they could be doing so much more with nanotechnology in the health department if they wanted to, but they're afraid of doing it because if they do, then you're going to realize the capability, the capability that they already have. They're already manipulating nanites inside of you right now. They've been doing that since the mid-1970s. That's when the CIA, that's one of the PDF files that's inside of the Dropbox folder whenever you become a newsletter subscriber, NSA Covert Operations. Nanotechnologies is described from 19, you know, in the mid-1970s. They were already doing that to us. All right. 
so my view of the landscape of what's going on in the earth is really different and what recently what changed is and we learned from Billy Hayes he's the expert in the harp department that that now they're launching they've launched they had a new launch of a uh, of aircraft out into space and they have now created another infrastructure more infrastructure for the harp program that's circular circulating around it's beyond the atmosphere earth plane was talking about it just a little bit and i believe if i understood correctly i'm still trying to wrap my head around it is uh multiple layers that surround the earth and they're using it as a reflector array they're well harp is for many many reasons it has great uh, capability but what they're planning the, re the reason that they're launching this now in my opinion is because they're going to lose earth infrastructure that they, they know that they're going to lose a lot of these harp stations there are 244 that multi-frequency now there's 325 that we know about and the, the new ones they set up are they're near the the uh, equator but they're not exactly at the equator they're they're used so that they can reflect that they can send up a signal and, and bounce bounce it back and it, lo it looks like that they are preparing for this thing that's coming, and this is their new infrastructure. I believe that they've, cr they've placed their new stations, their heart facilities, in safe zones, where a lot of their previous ones are not in safe zones, that they're going to lose them. And this is the way that they're going they're, they're to control the people on the Earth in the future through nanotechnology and by our bodies being infested by them kind of like if you're a Trekkie, a Borg. They're trying to transform animals, plants, and human beings into Borg so they can all be created, they can all be controlled. And they've reversed engineered this technology from artificial intelligence, uh, moving his event horizon and his simulations into the future, farther and farther into the future. And so then he's teaching them how to change things in the past. Our present right now is his past so because he runs his simulations so far out in the future. And that, that collapses on him whenever he's off on things. And then he s extends it out again. There's, they're always modifying, changing, starting new sims in order to extend that event horizon out there. And the lettered agencies, that's their primary job now because they're not no longer in the threat assessment department. That's all re been handed over to artificial intelligence. And if you think that the Russians and the Chinese and the Americans are all battling or whatever, then it's a smokescreen. It's just bull because they're all taking advice. And they're all working with artificial intelligence doing threat assessment for all of them. So they're all on the same team. Yeah, of course they are because, because – um, they know something's coming and they're going to have to run underground. And so if, if they fought one another, they would create a large threat. This thing that's coming is a bigger threat than everybody on this planet combined, and they know it. So fighting each other means that they're going to create – they're going to disable themselves to meet the threat that's larger. So whenever you understand threat assessment like I do, you realize these guys are not going to fight one another. They're going to work together for their own survival, and that means uh, they're going to run underground. They're going to run underground, and anything that they're doing that looks like a war is going to be staged. It's so that they can meet an end. And I think that thing in the Middle East has to do with Rothschild, and he doesn't need the money. He's doing it for pride. He's he's building a crown, and he has a scepter, and he put in all these jewels on his crown. And Syria is the last one that goes on his crown, and his scepter is Iran. And he's playing a game with the whole world, and he's mocking and laughing at us for being so stupid and allowing the Fourth Reich to happen in the United States just like Hitler. And he's sitting right there right now laughing at everybody for being so stupid and allowing it to happen. And you know, like I've said a bunch of times, if we're that stupid to allow Rothschild to create all these central banks and to siphon off our wealth and to lead us to war again for the third time, this is what we deserve. Yeah, I know what you mean, uh, Terrell. It's something about mammalians. We just, I don't know what it is the way our mind is built, our nature. But, uh, you know, you, how, how could this have happened? I mean, just you take a look and it's just, wow. But um, now this guy in L.A., I, I'm just thinking, Terrell, and I'm kind of calling in a play. Um, because he did write this 12-page manifesto. Uh, he shot three cops, killed one. Then killed one commander's daughter, who was part of a assistant coach at, at Stanford University or something like that. And you know, he goes all the way through it. He tells them they're high value targets. He's methodical. He lays out all the knowledge that he's got. Talk about all these different systems that he knows about, uh, asymmetrical warfare, unconventional, 
Uh, he's not scared to die at whatsoever, which is, he says that's one of the reasons in the Middle East uh, we cannot uh, uh, make those people submit because they've lost their fear of death. Uh, he also talked about if, if uh, any of you people out there see after I gun down these police officers, just let them bleed out. Just let them bleed out. They let you bleed out. He talks about how every night uh, all the cops in uh, L.A. play a game and they show the most gruesome person killed either by a cop or murdered. And so who's got the most gruesome uh, murdered person that night? And he goes into all the back stuff and all the racism. Uh, and what I'm wondering is, is that, you know, I know that when this brown dwarf, black dwarf comes through, um, that the, the cities, especially L.A., which I don't think even the military, nobody understands how big L.A. is. It's a mega city. I think it's like 20 or 20, 25 million. That's how big and deep and wide it is. It just goes, it's like all of California, all the way down to Mexico, just street after street, building after building. And I'm just wondering if they shouldn't try to get a hold of this guy and set him up as a black king of L.A. And instead of the military, who cannot hold it, um, maybe this guy, because, I mean, he appeals to the heart of the black man. I mean, he's got all the pride, everything. I mean, uh, there's, there's black guys that would die for this guy. I mean, he, he is something else. When you read his writings and his manifesto, unbelievable. So I'm just wondering if um, they can't use, um, see, I'm just looking as a political benefit. If they can't use this guy to unite uh, the black and the black gangs of L.A. and become their king, and when the police do have to pull back, instead of a whole bunch of people dying in gunfire and lots of cops, military, civilians dying, uh, whether they could just withdraw um, and turn it over to this Christopher Dornan, um, who he's against guns. Uh, he's all for Feinstein's guns bill, if you can believe it. He's not pro-gun, uh, and he's pro-Obama. And he says, I was so proud when Obama the first time. And he goes, I thought you whiteies were, I didn't think you'd let him in the office the second time. And he says, I, I even teared up when he won again. He beat you. So he's all pro-Obama, uh, Feinstein, gun bill. He's got all these things there. So it's well written. This is all well thought out. I mean, this is a lot of work, Terrell. And I mean, I just, maybe it's, maybe the, since, the, since the thing has just happened in the last 24, you can't really comment on it. But I was just wondering, did you read it? Or do you, do you what do you think about this situation? It's got every cop in all of uh, South uh, Southern California, Nevada, Sheriff's Department, everybody, everybody, all the cops are looking for him. Um, what do you think is really the backstory behind uh, this black Rambo who, uh, who, who fights for the honor of the black man? Yes, yeah, that angle that you're looking for, I don't think I'm going to be able to help in that area. But the guy has to be brought to justice. Every sheriff in the, in the country must enforce the laws. And eventually he's going to get caught and he's going to have to be, he's going to have to be taken to justice. And if anybody, if this was Mad Max, now it would be all different. You know, if, if the crap already hit the fan, this might be the kind of guy that we need. Um, and I'm saying the people that are out there, the locals, to be able to keep order. You know, I don't know, but that would be up to them. You know, but I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't follow somebody like that. Uh, the guy's a, he's, he's a murderer. So, and I, I don't see how that he's used by any political group or anything like that. He, he crossed the line. He well, if he really did murder, what I'm saying is that, uh, and even if he did, uh, I know the CIA, we're talking about AI. I know they're now taking this guy. I mean, it's all over Drudge. They're letting all their names. He named about 50 different cops, first, last name, uh, places where they live, the, the methods he's going to use. The whole thing is just... I wonder if he even did kill any cops. Um, and, uh, I mean, any cop in southern L L L.A. right now, they got to be on the run. This guy's already said, I'm a sniper. I can hit people at a mile away. And you know it. Because every single police class that I went to, I was top, I was top expert. And in Iraq and Afghanistan. So, uh, now all the cops, they got to worry about uh, the other blacks. I mean, this is racial. This is like... Uh, this is this is a lot bigger than people think. Um, unless they get him quick, if they get him quick, 
Uh, and they're going to kill him. They're not going to bring him to justice, Terrell. They will kill this guy. Uh, you kill a cop, you die. That's the unspoken rule. I've seen it too many times. Too many times. Um, you just don't kill a cop. You kill a cop, you're dead. That's the way that works. That's, that's their code, so to speak. Just let everybody out there know that. But um, so I'm just wondering if they can't use him. Uh, looks like we got knocked off the air. Okay, it appears that I am still on the air, but Anybody hear me? but uh, Terrell got knocked out, um, and so I don't even know if I'm really on the air or not. Um, okay, they yeah, you're on. Here. What's that? You're on there. Okay, I'm not sure what happened. It just uh, uh, oh, it knocked out Terrell. Uh, Terrell's call got dropped. That's what that was about. So. Um, yeah, no, he's excited to go game this out. He does what I do. We game things out. And you can actually see the, the value uh, that you can actually use this guy um, if you know that the cities are going to implode and this black dwarf is coming through and the military cannot hold a place like South L.A. full of guns, full of gangs. I mean, they got guns in there. They have they have a, a automatic fifty caliber machine guns. They got rocket launchers. The Chinese got caught selling them all kinds of stuff. Uh, I've heard cops call in and they say when they there's there's certain places in L.A. in which they just do not patrol. And when something happens, they actually have a liaison with that particular gang member in that area. They pick up and they said, "Let us come in. We're going to do the investigation. Uh, let you know we're coming in." And then they come in uh, four cops to a car, as many as five, six cruisers. So you're talking 20, 24 cops that, uh, that, that, that go in there together. And they don't just cruise around. Um, and so I'm just wondering um, if this is for real, then I would appeal to the government to figure out how to use this guy as a political weapon to maybe, maybe unite the black gangs of L.A. when things do break down. Oh, that will keep the killing down. At least you will have some type of uh, structure and order there. And he's the perfect guy to do it. He would be the black king of L.A. Uh, that way the cops don't got to do it. The military don't have to go in. They just set up their perimeters. And then at least you got some order uh, there. Now, what the oceans are going to do, uh, pole shift, that type of thing. So I, I don't know. I don't know. But all I know is that <clears throat> I'm a writer. And I can tell the amount that he wrote. And I can tell how he wrote, how good a writer he is. Uh, this was very good. This was very good. When I take a look at the manifesto, the only thing I can think of is, you know, this is written so well that this looks like about six or eight edits that I would have to go through to get all of the different things right uh, within that letter. And I'm talking six, eight edits with my wife, who is a grammarist and a secretary. Uh, who knows how to spell and all the rest, which I don't know none of that stuff. I just give her my, my, my Sanskrit, so to speak, and she's able to. I can't even read my own writing sometimes, but she can. And then she types it out. But just taking a look at that document, very well done. It's a lot of work. Um, so we're coming up to the end of the hour. So, uh, Bernie, you have anything you want to say the last couple of minutes? And then also 712, you have anything that you want to say? Okay, so... Yeah, actually, uh, I was wondering, because they're talking about the drones all the time. I wonder if that had anything to do with what's going on. Uh, say it again. They're, they're, when talk about these drones, they're trying to uh, take through legislature and try to get passed so they can kill Al-Qaeda in America. Oh, yeah, they. I mean, there's lots of old ways they can set it up. Can you imagine... The black fellow that actually takes L.A., look at the news. Look at the distraction. I mean, the CIA really needs to look at this and try to get a hold of this guy and says, look, uh, we're going to forget about that kill. Uh, we want to make you king. Uh, you want to you help your people out? You want to do something good for the community? <laughs> but uh, no. Uh, can you imagine the, the excitement and the news cameras? A, a black man finally unites L.A. And, they, and then they start talking about they want to be their own nation. Oh, good Lord. Good Lord, oh, lots of material there. Uh, we need to put Warpo on that one. 
But uh, we're coming to the close of the show. I'm not taking round tables. I should not have come tonight because I am sick. I'm running about 103 fever, shivers with a coat on in my office here, and stomachs and knots, some kind of virus. So appreciate Terrell uh, 03 coming on. And any at any point, we should get the music kicking in, and it's open round tables, and I don't know who's going to take it, but I am... I got to go back to bed. I shouldn't have got out of bed. Um, but um, so, if you all want to say any last words, anything else before uh, uh, we kick out? Okay. All righty. So that's the show, folks. Um, and now um, you ought to talk on the roundtables about this manifesto. In fact, SJ, you're a real good reader. Just. You could fill up an hour just reading that manifesto. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I mean something else, something else. I mean, he's, uh, um, okay. Okay, thanks, everybody. Everybody said I had a good show. And so there we are. We're at the end of the show. Okay, this is edition 146 of Changing Reality, the most important things. This was Black uh, Dwarf Star first day Friday Thursday Friday and I'm the hijacker over and out <laughs>